I'd like to move on to, I'll, I'll call it nutrition um, and, and, and everything, I guess, related to that. And I'll probably start, like, you've got an interesting diet. You, um, I don't know whether you still do it, but last time I spoke, you kind of eat once a day and you have some mm. meat and water. Is that, is that still the case? Pretty much. And how much meat and how much water? Water when I'm thirsty, don't measure it. Um, and how much meat, I, I only count grams of protein. So depending on whatever meat it is, like if it's a turkey or chicken, I don't need quite as much. Um, but I want to get at least one gram per pound of body weight uh, in, in grams of protein. Now, um, there is no such thing as a person who is zero carb because I don't care what the meat is. There's still glycogen in the meat. We've been talking about glycogen in the muscle for like, you know, the last two hours. So like it doesn't go away when, you know, when you're eating that, when you're eating muscle meat, it, there's still glycogen in there. It doesn't show up on the nutrition label. You know, in a 16 ounce steak, there might be one or two grams of carbohydrates. There's point four grams, I might get this wrong, 0.4 grams of carbohydrates in an egg, or it might be 0.6. I'm not sure. No, it's 0.4. <clears throat> Actually, still not sure. Uh, so, what is it? Uh, we'll check. <laughs> it's funny. I probably told her 20 times. Uh, so, so uh, you know, you eat a bunch of eggs and you got a couple grams of carbohydrates. So, I uh, also, I don't like necessarily the term carnivore because first of all it's unnecessarily aggressive um and you know i don't think we should walk on eggshells around vegans but i don't want to like upset them unnecessarily so they're already upset about everything so uh you know so it's just like i'd rather be like polite and just say i you know I prefer low carbohydrate nutrition um so Pretty much the same, um, protein heavy. Uh, and in that one meal, you'll other. try and get your whole day's worth of, so in, in your case, probably like 250, 300 grams of protein yeah. in that one meal. Sometimes it's three pounds of meat. Wow. That's, we, we did it last night. <laughs> yeah, just, just a mountain of ground beef. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, I think it's funny how the critics... I think some of these people are just looking for attention uh, and that's how they grow. Like we were talking about the internet bottom feeders, you know, they'll, they'll put some celebrity's name in the title of their video really just so they get more views. Uh, and of course that, that, that doesn't translate to followers at some point, <clears throat> but how'd I get on this? I have well, your, your myself. meat, your meat sort of Oh yeah. Diet. People criticize the, the carnivore diet. And they say, oh, the carnivore diet's so stupid. And then you see the nutrition program that they advocate. And because I'm talking about sports performance people, because they know about the one gram per pound of body weight, basically they're consuming, you know, 10, 15 grams of carbohydrates. And it's like, well, how the hell is that any different? Like it's called carnivore, therefore it's stupid. But if it's low carb, then it's great. Really? Like it's the same. So I, I think that's just kind of odd. And um, I see it every day with uh, nutrition critics, you know, saying, I don't know, you need carbohydrates or something like that. Like, no, you really don't, but you can't go zero. So like, it's like that, that whole conversation is just sort of crazy. How many years have you been on the one meal a day meat mainly diet? There have been some variations because I tested a couple things. In fact, um, I mean, I've, I've tested sort of medium carbohydrates for uh, about six months periods. And what would be, what would be medium? How did you find medium? You know, like 50, 50 grams of carbohydrates in a day. Um, you know, for, for various reasons, testing various things. Um, I'm sure if I ran a carbohydrate experiment now with volume training, 
it would be you know because glycogen right like um it would probably have more of an effect but uh there's a meta-analysis on glyco glycogen replenishment uh, and the uh, one of the authors the lead author was uh, menno henselmans that's another person you should interview uh awesome scientist he um it was really sort of like how many grams of carbohydrates do we need to replenish glycogen on a workout day and i mean it's really between 15 and 30. like you don't really need more than that uh i, I mean it goes into like you know like 30 if you're like a larger maybe male athlete 15 if you're if you're smaller but uh it, it just that's not much like it's but i think it's funny because in in this conversation especially in the comments like if you really want to be disappointed by society read the comments uh like there are people who are like oh this is fantastic you know way better than those you know those carnivore morons would come up with and it's like literally the same as what the carnivore people are talking about like like to the gram the same um because i also think just from a realistic perspective like are you ever gonna like not have a sip of anything that has a gram of carbohydrate in it we're going to dinner after this i hope you have a glass of wine you know i don't want you to think like oh, i better drink water because john's here i'm not going to be <laughs> drinking water just so you know uh yeah so i mean i think there's it's it's got to be realistic. It's got to be something that people are willing to follow. Um, the CEO of OsteoStrong, he always makes this joke: "What's the best diet?" And people go, "It's like he says, like in the social environment, like it's like he's got a joke, and people are like, oh. like it's the one you'll follow." Mm. Yeah, because ultimately, like how many how many nutrition recommendation books have there been? Thousands. How many did people follow? Very few. There's there's probably some best-selling books out there where nobody even followed what the guy actually did, except for maybe the author. What I, I, they say, a friend of mine who's in the book business told me that I don't know what the percentage, but most books people don't even they buy them and they don't even open the front cover, like they don't read them. So yeah, they just... read the description, <laughs> they buy them, they leave them on their coffee table, and then they tell their friends to come in about what they read on the description on Amazon. They never read the actual book. Yeah. So not surprising. When do you prefer to time that one meal a day then? Is there, do you do it based on, again, science when, when your body can digest it? Do you based on, base it on convenience when you're working? Because I, I suppose if you're eating that much meat, and you've got a busy schedule like today, it's not easy to kind of fit that in um, in your regular life, or, or, or maybe it is. So um, it was more about convenience than anything. Just at the end of the day, you know, I'm done working out, I'm done thinking. Like if the blood leaves my brain and goes into my digestive tract, that's okay. Because at the end of the day, you know, I, I'm not doing much anyway. So um, that's, I think just from a societal and social standpoint, that's the easiest way. Also, you know, you can go through life and never have a lunch meeting, but if you never have a dinner meeting, you're missing out on some shit. Like you gotta be available for dinner. Uh, what do you think about though, it, the digestion of it? Because I know, I, I know you were, I was listening to you talk about, you know, a couple of the things that people will find out in the next few years that, that leads to a lot of cancers is, is poor sleep and, um, and, and vegetables. I think that's what you said. <laughs> if you can remember saying yeah. that. What, what, like when I've, I've, I use this aura to track my yeah. sleep and I find if I do have a big heavy meal, particularly if I had like a couple of pounds of beef, that I would have a terrible sleep. So does that affect you in the same way or do you leave enough time? No, I from... get used to it. Okay. Like, like I can have, well, last night we, we made ground beef and I ate so much of it and I slept amazing. Yeah. But when I started doing that, I'd have heartburn, you know, you, so you, you get, you get a little used to it and we even ate kind of late. So, um, what's I, late for you? Well, I think we ate at like nine o'clock and then went to bed at 10. What would you normally eat then a, a bit earlier? I'd prefer dinner at like, well, it all depends on what's going on the next day. Um, 
Yeah, I'd like a, uh, three or four hours before going to bed. That'd yeah. be optimal. <laughs> but, I mean, you can't always be optimal. And then do you, do you, you know, you talk about dry fasting before. Do you only drink liquids when you have that meal or so so you're pretty much not drinking or eating anything all day or pretty much i try and almost every day for me is like a ramadan fast yeah and there's so much good data for ramadan fasting like i mean think there's almost almost two billion people a year do it and they have they improve their health situation so much during ramadan season uh of course this is not a part of the world where they really care about health at all. So they go back to terrible habits right afterward. Uh, but I think part of the reason they don't have worse health outcomes is because they do that, uh, the Ramadan fasting for uh, 20 days. Yeah. What's the benefit of, of reducing water intake? So you've heard that camels can go like a month without drinking any water, right? You know what a camel's hump is made out of? Fat, just fat. Um, what happens is when you don't have anything to drink, um, not totally regardless of electrolyte balance, but um, somewhat impervious to electrolyte balance, you have the ability to tap metabolic water. So what happens is you stop drinking, you feel really thirsty, and then, you know, after maybe 10 hours, but then you hit the 12th hour and all of a sudden you're not thirsty anymore and your mouth isn't dry anymore. So what happened was your body switched over to metabolic water, which is drawing water out of fat cells. That's how camels do it. Uh, and they can go months without having a sip of water. They're drawing it out of the fat cells. When you draw enough moisture out of a fat cell, it destroys the fat cell. Uh, so it's a much more permanent type of fat loss that happens during this process. Um, and once you try dry fasting, you'll never go back. Uh, so I'm a huge fan of it. Uh, probably gonna do it forever. Um, when I get my blood work done, I'm not my hydration's not weird or anything. Mm -hmm.